So imagine anybody that grew up in Toronto that only knew it as pocket pie or turnover. And then they go to Jamaica and they're like, hi, can I have turnover, please? Imagine yeah. the reaction. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Imagine the reaction. Imagine. In this video, I'm going to be talking with filmmaker Chris Strikes about his documentary that he did, Patty vs. Patty, where he talked about the history of the time that Canada almost had the Jamaican Patty change its name. You're watching For the Culture and Kara's Maggie TV. What up everyone, Kyrie's Maggie here and welcome back to my channel where I encourage you to submerge yourself in culture and live meaningful lives. And welcome to another episode of Fit of Culture. Today I am here with Chris Strikes. He is a filmmaker and let me tell you, the thing that we're going to be talking about today, y'all better go watch this documentary after this video because it is definitely a must watch. Thank you again for being here with me, Chris. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Maggie. So before we get into, you know, the main part of the video, just to give you guys a backstory. So this year I found out that, what was it, March 18th or March 17th? The, it's um, today. Uh, it's February 23rd. For... <laughs> <laughs> so I'll look all along. All right. So February 23rd is actually known as Party Day in Toronto. And it wasn't until this year that I actually knew about it. And mainly because of the documentary that Chris did on this specific topic. So I'm going to link um the video in the description box for y'all to watch. But let's put a little snippet on the, you know, on the page for you to see what it is about. My parents opened the Sunday Gleaner one Sunday, and it says on the top, headline, Canada bans Patty. We're not looking for it with the government. What? Welcome to Kensington Patty Palace. Patty represents many things for Jamaicans. It's something that's part of our traditional fare. We get one patty and one gingerbread. We get two patty and two cocoa bread. In February of 1985, we had a visit from an inspector. This establishment, among many other establishments, are illegally selling a product under the name Patty. I am issuing you an official notice of the violation. I said, well, this is ridiculous. According to some regulations, we cannot call our Patty that because it's a meat enrolled in pastry. Handheld pocket. Caribbean pie. No. You don't stop. You keep fighting. The government in Jamaica, the people in Jamaica, they're all wondering what is going on. If you do not comply, Consumer and Corporate Affairs will fine this establishment $5,000. Nobody is really quite sure how the patty controversy is going to be resolved. As everyone knows, the Jamaican patty, patty overall, is a big part of the Jamaican culture. Matter of fact, the best patties you will get is from Jamaica. Don't, don't debate me, anybody. Um, <laughs> this is not up for debate. But before we talk about that, I really want to talk about, you know, the influence of Jamaicans to mainly the city of Toronto. We do have a spot that is known as Little Jamaica. But I am curious, based on your understanding, what do you know about the flow of Jamaican immigrants to this part of Canada? Yeah, so, um, you know, Jamaican immigrants have been in Canada as early as the 1800s um, out in the East Coast and uh, like Halifax and all that. But in terms of like the very big influx of Jamaican, um, Jamaican immigrants into specifically Toronto, uh, that happened in the 60s and 70s. Um, there have been Jamaicans before that and there have been Jamaicans immigrating here since that but the big um influx was 60s 70s 80s also mm -hmm. as well too and and so my my mother and her side of the family they came here um in in the 60s uh, sorry in the 70s um you know uh and that was a time where uh there was a lot of trouble in jamaica uh, a lot mm -hmm. of political unrest um you know that was a time where um if people remember Jamaican history and reggae history, that was the time when Bob Marley did the unity concert mm. um, was the mid seventies, I think 75, 76. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, <clears throat> that time um, there was a lot of turmoil in Jamaica. So a lot of people left and went to England and, and, and the United States and Canada um, <clears throat> or foreign as foreign. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> in Ghana, foreign. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Foreign could be any of those three Listen. countries or any other country outside <laughs> of them three countries. But um, 
but yeah, so uh, specific to Toronto, there was a lot of immigration in uh, the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Awesome. So, I mean, we like for anyone who has visited, I know they always talk about, you know, like Toronto slang and things like that. It's, it's definitely made up of different languages, but I feel like the main one that a lot of us can recognize is Jamaican Patois being a part of the Toronto slang, as they call it. So there's no secret that there is a big influence here. Do you know if that influx is what helped with the building of the community that was that is known today as Little Jamaica? Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I, I definitely think so. And, you know, I don't have like facts in front of me or factual mm -hmm. evidence in front of me, but just from what I've seen with my yeah. own eyes and uh, anecdotal experience, yeah. um, you know, I went to church in uh, Vaughn Road and, and, and Oakwood area, and that's very close to Little Jamaica. That's very close to Eglinton and Marley Road. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a number of churches in that area uh, where um, there's a, a huge Caribbean community. Most of that Caribbean community uh, was Jamaicans, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I grew up in Rexdale. So, so to go yes. from Rexdale to a church in Vaughn Road, you know, that obviously is not close. Right. And then as yeah. well, too, when I used to get my hair cut and even to this day, sometimes when I still get like lined up a little bit, um, my barber's in Eglinton and Dufferin. <laughs> You know what I mean? My barber's Jamaican. All, all three of the barbers in the, in, the, in, the, in the shop, they're all Jamaican. You know what I mean? So like, and, and I've been going there since I was probably about eight years old and they were on Eglinton and then they moved down closer to Keel. Like they were Eglinton between Dufferin and Marley and then they moved down closer to Keel and then they moved to the spot where they've been, um, mm. uh, Dufferin just north of Eglinton. So, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I've had a lot of um, experience and upbringing within that area even though i didn't live there yeah you know what i mean so that just goes to show you the influence just even there and there's people that come from all over even to this day come from scarborough mm -hmm. come from you know uh um, north of the city um come from west of the city um that to all commune here whether it's to have patty mm -hmm. or or any type of jamaican food whether it's to get a haircut whether it's to go praise and worship you mm -hmm. know what i mean so so that that area um has held such a strong um, connection to um, Jamaicans and even Caribbeans at large. Even um, they're going to host the um, the Durham Carnival on the Eglinton West Strip. Yeah. Um, later this year as well, too, right? So that just mm -hmm. goes to show you how how um, influential that area is. Kitty Kitty Carnival used to be in that area as well, too, and before mm -hmm. they moved it to Malvern. Um, so yeah, that that the Eglinton West Little Jamaica area has been such a cultural icon to toronto and it's it's unfortunate <clears throat> pardon me it's unfortunate <clears throat> the transition is going through where the yes. construction you know the lrt has really hurt a lot of the businesses there and, yeah. and a lot of the residents there it hurt them financially yeah for sure i've definitely been down there a couple of times and i can see you know it's not the easiest place to navigate as well due to the recent changes with the construction going on so can definitely see how it has affected a lot of businesses so you know, I know in the wake of all of that, residents have definitely, you know, tried to push back in preserving their culture and the community itself um, wasn't that successful as they would have hoped, unfortunately. But back in the day, there was a time when a part of our culture was definitely targeted via the party. That is what we're going to be talking about today. Your documentary that you did as a filmmaker. Why, why this documentary? What was the... What was the interest for you in wanting to showcase this one in particular? I'm curious. Yeah. So um, when I heard this story, um, it was just so ridiculous to me. Like, um, <laughs> you know, I, and, and I just ran. It, it was it's funny because like it was one of those things that I just randomly came across on Instagram mm -hmm. um, on February 23rd. It was on Patty Day of last year um, oh. of 2021 that, um, you know, I was just scrolling on Instagram and um, I came across a story and I was like, what is this? is this a real thing? And then I and then I went and researched it and I was I, I, like, I still didn't even believe it was a real thing. Um, and then my mom, uh, I asked my mom because my mom was here at that time. Mm -hmm. um, so I asked my mom if she remembers the story and she's like, she 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 vaguely remembers it. And they're like, they, they, they were trying to call it something stupid like Caribbean pie or something, but I don't really remember. 
and I was like, oh, wow, okay, so, you know, I need to dig into this some more, so when I started digging into it um, and really uncovering it, I was, I was really surprised by it, and then when I, when I learned about uh, Michael Davidson, who's the, the lead and the, the face of the story, he was also the face of the story at the time as well, too, the face of my documentary, and then the face of the story at the time as well, too, mm. he was the one who was always in the media and outspoken and whatnot, when I, when I, uh, met with him on uh virtually and we started talking and i was just like well, i i this, this needs to be a film you know actually mm-hmm. I, I think i decided before that time that it needs to be a film which is why i connected with michael yeah but um but i was just like yeah this this needs to be a film because this is ridiculous and and this is a, a part of um toronto history that uh in canadian history that has gone largely forgotten even by the jamaican community as well yeah too. And then as well, um, it, it's gone largely forgotten for the people who were around at the time. And mm-hmm. But it's also not even entered the consciousness of so many people that have been born or immigrated to mm-hmm. Toronto and to Canada since. So yeah. I was like, you know, I know how popular Patty is. And yeah. you know, I grew up on Patty, even though I don't eat meat anymore. But um, I grew up on Patty and, and, and whatnot. So it's like... I, I immediately recognized the the relevance of the story to like such a wider community, a universal community. The universal relevance of the story is, is, is what really hit me about it and made me mm-hmm. want to tell the story. Awesome. And definitely you had um, support from CBC. CBC, yeah, correct. Yes, in making sure that it was, because it was very well done. Like I loved it. <laughs> I can't stop talking about it like I've watched it at least three times because just the back and forth that it had you know in going from reality to like the reenactment like that really put a nice touch on it for sure so what was it like in getting that support to even bring it to the the larger public you know getting that support from CBC was it something very difficult for you to navigate to do uh specifically with me it wasn't difficult to to navigate and um the the reason why is that because uh with cbc short docs and i definitely have to shout out uh leslie burchard um of cbc short docs um the the we had uh talked about working together on something prior to this because i did another film called becoming a queen which is dropping june 14th um and at first, before before I started really shooting it, um, I I talked to Leslie about the film, and and she was really interested in the film. But the the at the time, but the problem was is that I saw it as more than a short documentary. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw it as a feature length, or, or at the time at least an hour, but possibly a feature length. So, as you know, excited as she was to 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 uh, try to be be a part of that project, like for me, it wasn't the right fit just because like I wanted to tell a longer story so you know we we just kind of kept in contact and she she was always like you know showed interest in in the, in in my work and whatnot so when i had when patty versus patty came up um before i even knew to call it patty versus patty i i immediately knew that oh, okay like i'm gonna approach cbc short docs with this because this is going to be a short documentary like I, like i don't see this being a long piece like i see this being like a 15 20 minute thing mm-hmm. um so so because we already had that connection and that relationship, it, 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 it made the process um, a little bit more uh, accessible to me and, uh, and, and a little bit simpler to me. Plus, the story was just awesome, right? Because, like, yeah. you know, every, uh, I, I don't know about everybody, 100% everybody, but so many people within the CBC department, uh, documentary department, they eat patties. So, like, and, <laughs> and none of them knew about this story. So uh-huh. it's like when they have such a uh, strong relationship to a food and such an enjoyable relationship to a food and then they hear this story for them it was just automatic like it was it was automatic you know yeah no question yeah no questions because originally i i had called um um leslie and i and i said hey have you guys ever told this story has anybody told this story because i hadn't Mm -hmm. even written it down yet it's like has anybody ever told this story and she's like, no, and I can't believe that this happened. So please put together like a pitch for us. And I, nice. I'll circulate it in our department. And um, that's exactly what I did. And and uh, that's uh, what happened. And, and also, too, a, an important step that I'm missing in here is that um, 
uh, I actually reached out to uh, Maya Bedward, Maya and uh, Annie Bedward and Kate Frazier of Third Culture and pitched them the story as well, too, because, um, you know, uh, Maya and I had talked about working together on, on, on something potentially in the future. So when this story came up, um, I reached out to Maya and, and, um, and she was immediately on board, her and Kate of Third Culture, they were immediately on board. So we partnered and then, and then um, yeah, so we, uh, t- together, my company, Cattle Grove Entertainment and Third Culture, we work with CBC to essentially get this off the ground. Nice, lovely, definitely an important story. Last thing I would say is, have you ever thought that when you were making this film, apart from those who are the patty lovers, those who would watch it and probably didn't have that connection to the Jamaican patty, did you ever wonder if someone would be like, what, they were willing to risk that big fine for just not simply making a name change? Like, it's not that they wouldn't be allowed to sell it anymore. They're just telling them to change the name. So just change the name. Have you ever wondered if people would think that while watching? Um, no, because uh, we present in the film the fact that, like, the vendors were in a rock and a hard spot, specifically Michael Davidson and Kensington Patty Palace at the time. Mm-hmm. They were in between a rock and a hard spot because it's like, the sure the fine is five thousand dollars, which was a lot of money back in nineteen eighty five. Yeah. You can even argue it's a lot of money today for for a lot of people, right? Mm-hmm. Still, is a lot of money today. Um, but uh, so it was either be fined with five thousand dollars, or cost ten thousand dollars to change the name and packaging and re-register oh. the business and all that stuff, right? So we present that in the film. Yeah. So it wouldn't have been a simple thing to just change the name. Mm-hmm. Plus, um, as Michael communicated in the film as well, too, the the bigger loss than any just like financial thing about it would have been the goodwill around the name Patty. Yes. Because imagine any Jamaican, any Caribbean person um, moving to Toronto or even just visiting Toronto and they want a Patty and, and they're like, one, you know, one Patty, please. It's like, we don't we we'll call it turnover here or we call it, <laughs> we call it pie here turnover oh a turnover oh a pie you know when they mean? are riots <laughs> so you know what i mean so and i think that was the most important part important of it, thing is, for him is, yeah. is is like is the goodwill of the name patty mm-hmm. and the and the relevance of the name um patty you know what i mean mm-hmm. so you, uh, I think I think that would be a bigger loss because even just imagine for somebody like yourself, you come here and it's like, yo, I, I would have called it Team Turnover. I'll kind of listen. <laughs> I would know? have a feel they like, oh my gosh, like the culture shock is like <laughs> exactly. <laughs> everything is different. <laughs> exactly exactly so well yeah i'm definitely glad that you know they stood their ground and this just shows that you know when you have strength in number when you really believe in something that is for your culture and preserving it that you can definitely get you know what you need to get out of it because now today we know it as the jamaican party which i think is still suitable because now i have been learning about other countries who do have their own party and mm-hmm. you would hear it being called like i hear about haitian party like i'm from my family's from haiti i've heard of haitian party i've had it it's different but it's more of like a meat pie almost i would say mm-hmm. um and even nigeria i've heard sometimes is it nigeria don't quote me on that. Other countries, though, I've heard they mention like patty yeah. um, and it just is something different. So it's good. You know, when you have the distinction in the name, it allows people to know exactly what you're speaking about because food is very near and dear to us for many, many reasons. Yeah. And like, you know, <clears throat> um, you, you, you don't like that only happens in, in a country where there's people coming here from all over the world. Um, so Canada or United States or in mm-hmm. England or France or whatever, um, because you're not going to go back to Jamaica and ask for a Jamaica, Jamaican food. But, yeah, yeah. Like just They're going to look on you food, like... Right? You're going to go ask for jerk chicken or oxtail or, or a callaloo or, or ackee and sawfish. You, you know, whereas here, you'd be like, what do you want to eat tonight? How about some Jamaican food? Or, or how about some Chinese food, right? Yeah. You, you go to China, you're not going to say, I want some Chinese food. You know it's specific, I mean? yeah, to the food item itself, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's really much like that, like that sort of phenomenon is really, um, I guess, like prevalent for um, countries that there's so much diversity in, yeah. which, which really speaks to Toronto, especially um, Canada, but Toronto especially is just the diversity yeah. in here. And actually, you'd asked the question earlier about um, wondering if other people would would uh, 
say, why didn't they just change the name? The, the other element to it as well, too, and th this was the element from, from people at the time, from the stories that I heard and interviews that I did that weren't um, in the film, mm -hmm. is that um, there were actually a lot of cultures, a lot of other cultures or ethnicities that were behind the, that were in support of the, of the patty vendors and the Jamaican patty oh, vendors. That's good. Because for them, like, so for, for instance, like, like Portuguese or Italian or, 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 or the Asians, um, because for them, they were like, well, if they go after the Jamaican patty and, and tell them to change their name, then we're next. Like, <laughs> yeah, we could be next. And maybe they tell us to change the name of our our staple food or our culturally um, popular significant food. Right. Or, or so there was a lot of um, there was a lot of support from the wider community of uh, immigrants from other parts of the world as well, too, that lived in Toronto. Wow, that's really cool to hear. I, I, I like that. I like that. I, um, it's important that, you know, we definitely stick to um, supporting each other, especially when we do have a collective goal. Um, mm -hmm. So that's really great to hear. And my thank God them fight because God know. <laughs> we wouldn't know it as positive. Imagine turnover, y'all. Like, let me know in the comments, y'all, which one of the names from the film, if you have watched it already, which one was the most ridiculous to you? Turnover, Meat Pie. Or Caribbean, there was something pocket. about Caribbean. There's oh, yeah, pocket. Caribbean pocket. Yeah. Let me know which one is the most ridiculous name in your opinion. Um, thank you and again. So just imagine oh. this. Just uh, just one more one more joke to give you. Just imagine yeah. this. So imagine anybody that grew up in Toronto that only knew it as pocket pie or turnover, <laughs> and then they go to Jamaica and they're like, "Hi, can I have turnover, please?" Imagine yeah. the reaction. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. imagine the reaction imagine the reaction oh man that would be like, a great story for them it's like where can i get a good pocket out here what oh, a pocket are you a pants you want <laughs> honestly though no. i care so i care <laughs> thank you so much again chris for you know taking the time to speak with me and again everyone if you haven't watched this yet the link is in the description box for you to go watch it let's get this up to millions of views okay like it's on youtube it's accessible youtube is free um so let us support him in his journey and you said you have another film coming out soon so once we have that as well wherever it's available i'll also provide that in the description as well for anyone who's interested in checking out but where can we find you if we want to continue to support you on your filmmaker journey yeah so i mean just instagram uh instagram at chris strikes c-h-r-i-s-s-t-r-i-k-e-s or um, also uh, at Calagrove ENT, so that's C-A-L-L-O-W-G-R-O-V-E-E-N-T. Um, and yeah, you'll find, you, you'll, you'll find me on there as well too, and you'll find all the content on there, so yeah. Awesome, well, for you who are watching, thank you for tuning in. Hope you loved this episode, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.